This is the very first set of PowerTap P1 power meter pedals to land in the UK. We've been able to ride them a little already, uh, get our heads around them, and here is what you need to know. The P1 is 999 pounds. They weigh 215 grams each. It's a dual-sided system with eight strain gauges in each pedal built into the axle. It's an all-in-one system, so there are no pods. You simply fit them like any other pedal and you're good to go. The batteries are built into the pedal body. It takes a AAA battery, and there's even a handy sticker to tell you which way around it goes. The AAA batteries give you around 60 hours of riding time, which for a high-level user is two to three months of riding time. P1 will sort of go to sleep to preserve its battery after a short time. Waking it up is very simple. You just spin the pedal. There's a little green light in there that says that the pedal is active. That light can also flash red at varying frequencies. That will indicate any kind of problem that there is with the pedal. So while the two pedals look identical, the right pedal is the slave and sends data to the left pedal. The left pedal is what sends the data up to your head unit, be it a power tap, a dual computer, or a Garmin. The reason you might want your power meter located in the pedal as opposed to the crank, the uh, crank says spider, or the rear hub. The main advantage, it gives you transferability, really easy transferability from bike to bike. You don't need to worry about your bottom bracket size or the type of drivetrain you're running. So it's very interesting to see PowerTap bring the system to market to complement their existing G3 power hub. The PowerTap P1 pedals use both Ant Plus and Bluetooth communication protocols. The Bluetooth is for wireless firmware updates through an app that you download to your smartphone or tablet uh, or to a computer. For transmitting the power data to your computer on your bike, it uses the common Ant Plus protocol. At the moment, the, uh, the P1s have left and right split, and they can show you your live left-right balance or any other average that your computer is able to do. Coming soon, uh, PowerTap promise extra metrics, for instance, a spin scan, is very likely showing where in the pedal stroke you apply the power, uh, how smooth your pedal stroke is, and also some equivalent of uh, a feature that the Garmin Vector 2s have called Pedal Center Offset, which shows whereabouts in, in the pedal's uh, axis from side to side you apply the power. And that's really useful for uh, knee tracking. So for instance, if you have some physiological thing that suggests that, uh, that the causes your need to track inwards or outwards, you may find you applying the power to the outside of the pedal or to the inside of the pedal accordingly. That might be something that you're able to address as a result of looking at that metric. To calibrate, it's exceptionally simple, even on first installation. So you simply fit the pedal like uh, any other. There's an eight mil Allen key in the back, turn it into the crank, just nip it up. It doesn't require a huge amount of torque, unlike the Garmin Vector so you don't need a torque wrench to do it. Then you go into the menu for your, for your computer, find Calibrate, and do a regular calibration like you would at the start of any ride with a power meter. And that's it. Whereas the Garmin Vector 2 requires you to do a, or be a very short ride at between 80 and 90 RPM so that it can understand the angle of the pods, then ask you to set crank length and then do a calibration. By that time on the Vector, you're a few minutes up the road and you've already started. It's not a big difference, but if you're changing the pedals from sort of one bike to another very regularly. It's one more thing that helps speed up the process. The P1 pedals use a steel axle with two needle bearings and one case bearing, which PowerTap say should last an extremely long time. They're very well sealed. At the moment, you do have to send the pedals back to America if you do need them servicing, but it's unlikely anyone will reach that point for at least a year from now. Also helping the long life of the P1 pedal, the top plate is replaceable, simply unscrews and, uh, and fits a new one. So you're very unlikely to wear these out. The P1 uses look type cleats. We've tried these with the supplied cleats, which are sort of an aftermarket look compatible type, and also with some original look cleats and, and both work absolutely fine. So I've been riding the P1 pedals for about a week now in a couple of different bikes, including the one behind me, which you can see, which has a PowerTap G3 wheel set and also a Rotor Power LT left-sided crank. So far, first impressions, the P1 seem good. I'm getting pretty consistent data. Uh, they're tracking well with the G3 hub. They are a little bit weighty. 215 grams each is not insignificant. That is a slightly bigger weight penalty than you get from some other power meters. At the same time, it's not huge. So unless you're a real weight weenie, then uh, it's possibly not a deal breaker. At 999 pounds, they are cheaper than the, the new Vector 2s. One other thing to possibly consider is, uh, is ground clearance. You can see that it's, it's quite a chunky pedal and it, it does lose some ground clearance. One other small trade-off for the P1 being an all-in-one design is that to accommodate all of the electronics just next to the crank here, uh, it does increase the Q factor very slightly. If you're particularly sensitive about that, it's, it's something to consider. But uh, when riding these pedals back to back with others, to be honest, I haven't noticed it. It's a little too early to give a final verdict on the P1 pedals, 
but we'll be doing a lot more testing and we'll have a full review for you soon in an upcoming issue of Pro Cycling Magazine.